Understanding Your Content Funnel's L Pages A lot of people misunderstand the role of L Pages. L Pages, of course, stand for Like Pages. These are pages intended to push people to trust your brand enough to buy from you. In other words, these L Pages assume that when people click over to them, they know enough about the basic information of your niche. They're not trying to answer general questions. L Pages don't share basic info. I just want you to be clear about this. When you create an L page, you're not saying to the reader why you are interested in this stuff or people are interested in this type of product. They don't want that. That's introductory stuff. For example, if somebody is looking to bake Napolitano style pizza, they go first to a K page that tells them that Napoli style pizza came from Naples in Italy. It was brought by Italian immigrants to the United States. It is a very tasty form of pizza. It's puffy, so on and so forth. When people go to an L page from that original K page, they don't want to be told the same info. They already know the background. Now, they want specifics, like how not to burn their Napoli pizza too much. What kind of pieces are available to produce the very best Neapolitan-style pizza? You get the point. They're looking for deeper information, which would then eventually lead them to buying a product. They have deeper needs at this point. Don't waste their time by rehashing basics or intro. It just erodes your credibility and authority. When people land on an L page, you should safely assume that they already know about the categorical options available to them. L pages are all about distinction. L pages are all about pushing your prospect to one type of product category over another. In other words, since a reader ended up on your L page, they already think you are credible to a certain degree. Now, they're basically open or susceptible to you suggesting to them one particular broad category of solutions over another. In many cases, this involves disabusing them of earlier held beliefs regarding other options. L pages must interlink to produce this disabusing effect. Remember the whole point of L pages is to create distinction in the mind of the prospective buyer. Prior to this point, they were at the K page level and they're basically saying, well, there are so many options out there and they're basically the same. The job of a well-written L page is to say, no, they're not. How do you make your case? You can say that there are different levels. There are different categories. There are different types. There are different brands. There are different products. You put it all together by creating L pages that compare these. So, with the different levels, you list them down. You say, top level, bottom level, and then explain why. In terms of categories, you just pit category versus category. You would say this is one particular category of solution and this is another. These are weaknesses and strengths, pros and cons, you name it. When it comes to types, just put type versus type. Again, walk them through the advantages and disadvantages. The same goes with brand versus brand and product versus product. Get a clear idea on the different forms of L pages. L pages are all about comparisons. They're all about contrasting different options to highlight in the minds of prospective buyers why your particular option is superior to everybody else. The best way to do this is through some sort of comparison model. These take many different forms. These can be side-by-side -side product comparisons, categorical comparisons, categorical consumer guides regarding different broad types of products, brand-by-brand -brand comparisons, and other types of comparisons that enable consumers to compare and contrast different options available to them. Set up your comparisons using a funnel. I can't advise you to just slap together some reviews and call it a day. People who land on those reviews wouldn't know what to do with them. You haven't set them up properly. It's like trying to ask a girl to marry you the moment you just meet her. That doesn't make any sense. You have to set her up first, right? The same applies to L pages. You can't just go straight to a comparison. Remember, they're coming from K pages, which is basically establishing your credibility. So, you have to have some sort of intermediary set of pages that highlights, in broad terms, the different options out there and why your preferred class of solutions makes the most sense in the lives of your prospective audience members. You have to qualify people first. You have to understand that a lot of people may bounce off your website. They might think, this is not the information I'm looking for. And that's fine. They were never your customers to begin with. They weren't going to buy from you anyway. What's important is you focus on people who are suggestible. These are people you can persuade 
or otherwise influence to eventually buy from you. Set up your comparisons to win. A lot of people think that if they just put up a comparison of different products that somehow, some way, the prospective buyer will know what to do. Well, chances are they'll get pieces of information from your comparison chart and buy somewhere else. This happens all the time to Amazon affiliate marketers. It's really sad that they do all the heavy lifting and research, only to end up with a whole lot of nothing because their prospective customers spend their hard-earned dollars somewhere else. You don't want that to happen to you. So, you have to set up your comparisons in an underhanded way. Basically, just by looking at the comparisons, it becomes abundantly clear what direction you're pushing them to. Is this underhanded? Yes, but it doesn't have to be unethical. If you lay out the facts, then ultimately, it's the consumer's choice. It's all about playing up your strongest hand. Selling anything online and offline is like playing poker. You want to work with your strongest hand. Even the worst product in the world can still be positioned in such a way that it can be bought. And it all boils down to highlighting your strongest feature. Even the ugliest woman on the planet can still find a date if she positions herself right. Maybe she's got a great sense of humor. Maybe a lot of people think she is smart as a whip. That's good enough for a lot of guys. So do yourself a big favor. Even if you're selling a dog of a product, look at its strongest point. Maybe it has really cheap shipping. Maybe it has amazing customer support infrastructure behind it. Look for your strongest product and compare the different alternative options based on your strongest point. Just as a very ugly woman is not going to compare herself to a supermodel, you shouldn't compare your product to its category killer. That doesn't make any sense. You have to position the category killer based on its weakest point, which happens to be the strongest point for your product. That's how you get a sale. That's how you get into the head of even the most skeptical consumer. Call the reader to action. A lot of people think that call to action phrases only apply to sales pages. They're clueless about the fact that even content pages have to have a call to action. You have to understand that if consumers are unclear as to the next action they're going to take, they can be relied on to do nothing. Unfortunately, when they do that, they don't put any money in your bank account. You don't see extra dollars in your online bank account. That's just not going to happen because your website's visitors are confused. They don't know what to do. They don't know where to go. They don't know what steps to take next. You have to take the initiative for them. You have to spell it out. Assume that everybody that ends up on your website has an 8th grade education. Keep it simple. You'd be surprised as to how hard you can push people down the content conversion funnel until you get them eating off the palm of your hands. Make sure your content funnel integrates well with your conversion funnel. Too many marketers obsess about conversion funnels. Too many marketers just focus all their firepower on their conversion pages. I really can't say I blame them because these are your bread and butter pages. These pages determine whether you're going to make $1,000 a month, $100 a month, or $100,000 a month. This is where the magic happens, and I understand that. But the problem is these pages don't exist in a vacuum. They're part of a larger context that ultimately resolve around your brand. And if you're so short-sighted that you can only see bits and pieces of the overall picture, then you only have yourself to blame if you're not making as much money as you would have hoped. This is pretty much the reason why a lot of online marketers can't, for the life of them, make the thousands of dollars that other people are making. It's not because they're dumb. It's because they're focusing on the wrong things. You need a tight fit between your info pages and conversion pages. You have to make sure that you use calls to action to get people to where you need them to go. Unfortunately, when marketers set up K and L pages, they skip the T pages. This is an often fatal mistake. If somebody's making $5,000 a month from their online store and they committed this error, you can safely bet that that person's actual unrealized income is $50,000 a month. A lot is lost in translation because they skipped a very vital part of the overall sales conversion content and sales conversion process. These are not linked up properly. Think about the plumbing in your home. If you have a faulty pipe, then regardless of how much water comes through your home, by the time it gets to the faucet, you're just going to have to settle for a dribble. Do you see how this works? The same applies to sales. Don't neglect your T pages. T pages stands for trust pages. These are the pages where people go from liking a particular category of solutions or even collection of products you're pushing to trusting a specific product or service solution. 
The most common form of T-Page is an individual product review page. At the end of the day, once the prospect has gone from K-Page to the L-Page, they basically have a very good idea of what's out there and they're ready to decide. Now, they're basically properly educated. Your T-Page then should get straight to the point. It should basically just say, okay, these are the reasons why you should trust this particular product. Please understand that whatever you're talking about on the T page must relate to what went on before at the L page. So if the L page convinced the reader that the hallmarks of a superior product is 123, your T page better mention 123. Besides individual product review pages, another common form of a T or trust page are the product description pages on e-commerce sites. This is when people go to an online catalog and they click on the product link and then they see the product described. That is a T-page. The Anatomy of Successful T-Pages Successful T-Pages really are psychological in nature. You must remember that people are buying products for benefits. They couldn't care less about features. Maybe you're selling a washing machine and it has five modes. It only takes up 10 kilowatt hours or whatnot. Consumers couldn't care less about features. They do care about benefits. Understand the difference. The difference between features and benefits. Features are technical in nature. They're about screen size, screen brightness, certain new technology. Benefits, on the other hand, are psychological in nature. If somebody's buying a washing machine, they're looking to save time. They're looking for more control over their life. They're looking for more time with their loved ones. So, how are you going to repackage a time-saving feature it has a nice fancy name into terms that your end buyer would appreciate. So, you talk about spending more time with their children. You talk about him being able to do more with less money and living life to the fullest. This is how benefits work because benefits ultimately are personal in nature. Remember, most American consumers couldn't care less about the features or the jargon that are on your sales pages. They care about what's important to them. Remember, just as you ask yourself, what's in it for me? Other people ask themselves that question as well. It is all personal. So, you have to phrase whatever benefits that your product brings to the table in those terms. The essence of effective tea pages are calls to action. They have different forms, but the key to them is emotional impact. When crafting a CTA, call to action, emotionally tie the reader to the benefit they will get if they buy the product or service. The different types of calls to action. Call to action using emotional triggers. Example, take your life to the next level by saving at least 80% on your next vacation. Click here. Calls to action involving authority. Example, 9 out of 10 plastic surgeons swear by this product. Call to action using social proof. Example, click here to get the number one rated laptop solution for insurance professionals. The key to calls to action is to get away from just saying click here or order now. When you do that, you waste momentum. Instead, amplify the sense of need in the mind of your prospect. Please understand that once they get to a page where there's a call to action, your content pages or your conversion pages have already done most of the heavy lifting. Don't waste it by just saying order now. Plug into some sort of emotional urgency.